listening to the radio. I think it was a sports radio station. That's usually what I'm listening to. I'm trying to get a, an opportunity to hear how well my New England Patriots are doing. So <laughs> <laughs> yes, I try to get the Patriots in every Sunday, some of us. Um, every, even during the non-football season. But in any event, they're talking about the upcoming Thanksgiving holiday, as everyone is, is apt to do right now. And, and one of them says, you know, in our home, if certain food, certain meals, certain dishes aren't made, you know, then, man, it's, if, if you don't get that dish, you know, like whatever, grandma's, you know, sweet potato casserole or whatever that might be, it's just, thank you, it's just not Thanksgiving, it, it's, it's just another meal, you know. It got me thinking a little bit, because really the truth is, though this upcoming Thursday, you know, for some of us especially, um, you know, my son Tennyson is a really big eater. Um, some of the meals, some of, some of the meals might be really big, and they're probably going to be, you know, more complex than than usually. However, when you look at the whole thing, really, this upcoming Thursday, it really is just another meal. I mean, it, it, it's not the food that gives substance to what we call Thanksgiving, folks. It's it's the thanks that we give, right? It's that attitude of, it's in our hearts of gratitude that, that makes the moment we call Thanksgiving truly meaningful. That, that in reality has the power to make really all of our moments meaningful. A day doesn't have to just be another day. A meal doesn't have to just be another meal. It can be a very meaningful moment to this life we live when we are able to know what it means to, to give thanks. So let's talk a little bit about how it is that giving thanks is the gift that keeps on giving. In 1 Thessalonians 5, the Apostle Paul says, Rejoice always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Give thanks in all circumstances. First thing I'd like us to think about in this idea of giving thanks and how it's the gift that, that keeps on giving, that can make every moment meaningful, is that giving thanks blesses others and it builds our humility. Giving thanks blesses others and builds humility. As a um, middle school student in the 1980s, a young man by the name of Lee Bono, he stayed after school one day and he, he removed the spinal cord and some other organs from a frog as part of a science project and took the brain out of the whole thing. And he did such a good job that his science teacher, a fellow by the name of Al Sidlecki, told young Lee, he told him, he said, you know what, you might just become a neurosurgeon someday, you're so good at this. And guess what, that's exactly what this young man did. He went on to become a neurosurgeon. Well, years later, after another successful surgery, one of his patients, who was so thankful for what you know Lee Bono had done for him, said to him, you know what, you're so good, you really ought to reach out to that to that teacher of yours, the one who inspired you. And you need to thank him. And that's exactly what Lee Bono did. He managed to get a hold. He hadn't seen him since high school days, but he managed to track down his old teacher, and he gave him a call. And he just said to him, the surgeon said to his former teacher from high school, he said, I want to thank you. And, and this teacher, Al said, Lucky, he remembers it this way. He says, I was flabbergasted. I said, of all the people in your entire career, you want to thank me? And then he shares, he goes, it was it, the, the feeling I had. He said, it was the same feeling that I had when my own kids were born. I, I started to cry. You know, these, these, what, four simple words? Or two words, thank you. I started to cry. He said, it made me feel really important that, that I had that kind of influence. Folks, you know, from the kid who bags your groceries, you know, to the, to the surgeon who saves your life, really, when you say thanks to someone. Those simple words, thank you. When, when you express gratitude to someone, not, not only are you communicating to them that, that they're appreciated, that they, they have value, that, that they, in ways that are both you know, big or small, that they're a blessing, but you also, you, you plunge yourself, don't you, right back into the reality that in this life, we all need each other. When you thank somebody, it's a humbling thought. It takes a moment to realize, you know what? I needed that. And you plunge yourself back into the reality that all of us, in ways big and small, no matter how you look at it, we, we all are people that are in need of grace in our lives. We're all in need of something, someone, somehow, or some way. 
and that that's an okay thing. You know, it's good to take a moment to, to be thankful toward others, to be thankful toward the things we receive. Because in doing so, we humble ourselves. And, and, and when we do that, we remind ourselves as people of the fact that, that in reality, no matter how much we may think we know and how much we've achieved, just like Lee Wono, the great neurosurgeon, that ultimately, no matter how much our society wants to try to convince us that, you know, hey, you're really all that, that it, to some degree, maybe we're not as much as we think of ourselves. And, and we need to humble ourselves, and we need to appreciate others and their influence in our lives. And, and when we do that, when we give thanks, not only do we end up blessing the one that we thank, but we bless ourselves in return, and that's why it's the gift that keeps on giving. We end up blessing ourselves in return because when you can humble yourself and acknowledge the fact that at levels big and small, we all need grace, we all need each other, then we become able to take a sip from the cup that, that only the humble are able to drink from, and that is the cup of God's grace. God's Word says in James 4 that God resists the proud, those who, don't, who think they don't need anybody else or anything else. God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. Let's read that together, can we? God resists the proud, but gives grace to the humble. The reality is giving thanks blesses others, and it builds humility in our lives. And kind of on that same note, it's important to understand that giving thanks, it gives grace, but it gets grace in return. Giving thanks is a gracious act that brings grace back into our lives as well. Because, because the humble heart, folks, is a thankful heart. You know? It's a thankful heart. It's also a grace-filled heart. When, when Paul, who wrote these words of Scripture in 1 Thessalonians, when, when he urged the Christians of Thessalonica to give thanks in all circumstances, he was calling them into a personal experience, a personal reality that he had come to know of God's grace in his life. He says this uh, in a little different way in Philippians 4.12. He kind of expounds on this personal experience and reality. He says this of being able to be thankful. He says, I've learned the secret of being content in any and every situation, whether well-fed or hungry, whether living in plenty or in want. I can do all things through Christ who gives me strength. I really like how he puts it in the message. It says, I've found the recipe for being happy, whether full or hungry, hands full or hands empty. What, whatever I have, wherever I am, read this part if it's there, we have it, I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I can make it through anything in the one who makes me who I am. I am. To understand who Paul understood himself to be, it, we need to take another look a little bit further in the scripture. It's in 1 Timothy. It's a letter he writes to a young man who Paul himself has kind of mentored in the faith. And he talks a little bit about his background. And once again, he's giving thanks again, as he's always so apt to do in 1 Timothy, the first chapter. He says this, and it's about himself. He's reflecting. He says, I thank Christ Jesus our Lord who has given me strength, Christ Jesus who has given me strength, can you hear the humility? <clears throat> that he considered me trustworthy, appointing me to his service, even though I was once a blasphemer and a persecutor and a violent man, I was shown mercy because I acted in ignorance and unbelief. The grace of our Lord was poured out on me abundantly, along with the faith and love that are in Christ Jesus. Here is a trustworthy saying that deserves full acceptance. Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, of whom I am the worst. But for that very reason, I was shown mercy, so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Paul gave thanks for the grace that he had received in Christ Jesus. And he recognized that because he had received grace, grace would be given unto others. Oswald Chambers says it this way, The thing that awakens the deepest fountain of gratitude in a human being 
is that God had forgiven his sin. Folks, Thanksgiving is meaningful not because of Grandma's side dish. It's meaningful because of the God who has bestowed his rich grace upon us and has forgiven us of our sin. Gratitude is a grace attitude. It, it reflects our awareness of the fact that we are sinners in need of grace. That in Christ Jesus, you and I, we are who we are. Someone with a lot to be thankful for. A sinner saved by grace. And the, and the beauty of grace, grace that's been received, is that a thankful, humble, grace-filled heart can't help then but go forth and give the grace that it has received away to others in return. So giving thanks gives grace and gets grace in return. It also blesses others and it builds humility. And then finally, giving thanks. Giving thanks brings you into God's will and it brings God's will into your world. You wouldn't believe it, a silly thing like just saying thank you, would you? But the reality is that giving thanks brings you into God's will and brings God's will into your world. But, but for that very reason, Paul said back there in 1 Timothy, but for that very reason, I will show mercy so that in me, the worst of sinners, Christ Jesus might display his immense patience as an example for those who would believe in him and receive eternal life. Give thanks, he says in 1 Thessalonians. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Being thankful is God's will for us, friends. It's his plan for us. It's his purpose for us. It, it, it is God's will for us to give thanks. It's the gift that keeps on giving. The, the truth is, the only human expression of the will of God that most people will ever encounter in this world. I'll say that again. The, the truth is the only human expression of the will of God that most people will ever encounter in this life is the people of God who daily humble themselves at the foot of the cross and drink from the cup of God's grace, giving thanks to God the Father through Christ Jesus. It's, it's quite likely that at some point in the next few days, this week, especially perhaps even around the Thanksgiving table, it's quite likely that you are going to find yourself encountering someone who doesn't know God's grace. Someone who hasn't experienced the forgiveness that God wants to offer. Someone who doesn't have anything in their, in their mind, they have nothing to be thankful for. Who, whose world is, is godless and is hopeless and without joy and without real gratitude. The reality is your attitude, friends, how, how you handle the challenges of life and, and sometimes the difficult circumstances of life, that is God's opportunity to see His kingdom come and His will being done in your life and in the life of those that He brings across your path. The, those He will bring into your life this week. And of course, every week of your life. So really, it's a chance for people to catch a glimpse of Jesus. The Jesus in you, the hope of glory, the gift of God's grace to the world. And they're only going to catch it as they glimpse you. Because there's, there really aren't any other people in their lives other than you. Jesus is in heaven, and it's only you who are able to be him to your world today. Gratitude is not connected to the hype index, folks. You know, I know our culture likes to convince us that. You know, the, the bigger, better deal spectrum. Gratitude is not reserved for only special occasions like Thanksgiving Day or, or big gifts. It, gratitude belongs to those who fully understand that every good gift is from above, coming down from the Father of the heavenly lights. Now, obviously, when you think of you know, being thankful in every circumstance, in all things, Obviously, it's, it's not practical to literally say thanks after every breath. You know, that would be, that, thanks, thanks, that would be kind of odd, wouldn't it? It's not very practical to say thanks between every breath or between every heartbeat. But you know what? We can allow a continual attitude of gratitude, a continual attitude of thanksgiving to shade our disposition, to shade the way that we see our world, to filter our thoughts through. And we most certainly can offer a, a, a simple word of thanks for every kind gesture that we encounter throughout the day. 
uh, you know, for instance, you know, the person who uh, decides that they'll give way on the sidewalk as you're walking along, you know, and they decide to be the one to step a little to the side and give you room to pass. Not too hard to say, well, thank you. Um, or, or, or perhaps, you know, uh, to give thanks for the portion that's going to be on your plate at some point in the day, you know, to the, to the parent or to the, some other provider in your life that has made that, that portion available. Uh, or or that, that teacher who took the time in the, the last three or four weeks to really prepare that really awesome, you know, Thanksgiving break homework assignment that they sent home with you. <laughs> who took the time and the care to help invest in your education. Uh, that you can offer a word of thanks unto them. Rejoice always. Pray continually, Paul said in 1 Thessalonians. Give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Giving thanks brings you into God's will and brings God's will into your world. Now that teacher, Al Sidlecki, he was just kind of admitting how, how that whole event felt to him at the time, you know. And he said, you know, I just I have to admit, as far as being a teacher, I, I'm almost afraid to say to people that I'm a teacher. He said, but he said you know, after that phone call, I, I'm not afraid anymore. He said, he said, to, he said to Lee Bono, he said, you know what, because you called me today, I'm going to help as many people as I can to find their passion for life, too. Folks, there are people all around us, there, I'm sure there's some sitting in this room today, that they are needing someone to be Jesus to them. Someone to come forward and just offer a simple word of affirmation, a simple word of thanks, a simple message that you matter and you make a difference. And it can make all the difference in the world. It's God's will for you, friend, and it brings God's will into your world. Perhaps this week, this Thanksgiving week that's out in front of us, can be the first week of a life filled with weeks, friends, in which humble, graceful, gracious followers of Jesus Christ can give thanks to God in all circumstances and begin, friends, to purposefully go forth and give the gift of thanks, the gift that keeps on thinking keeps on giving, the gift that blesses others, that builds humility, the gift that gives grace as much as it gets it, and perhaps we can go and be God's will in our world.